Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, how to use Zebra HZ. This is video four, and today we're tackling oscillator spectral effects. So this video will be long, so get a cup of coffee, maybe a beer or a juice box or something like that, and let's begin. So right click the display port, go to init preset, so we're all starting fresh. And over here on our oscillator, let's see if we have some signal. We have that beautiful sine wave all those nice curves. So let's go to oscillator effects here. And basically, so you understand, this is basically harmonic manipulation before anything gets filtered, right? So we have spectral effects, right? We're affecting the spectrum over here, which is why I have this spectrum view and an oscilloscope here in the bottom. So we can kind of visually see what's happening to the sound here as well as hear it. So these run in series. So we have two of these independent knobs. So we can use two spectral effects before we do any other filtering or anything else like that. So that's kind of cool. And they also come with modulators, which is really awesome. So the first one here is going to be fundamental. So let's listen to our first note here. So first one, fundamental. We completely have lost our fundamental right down over here, as we can see this line here, and then we turn it on and it is gone. So as we turn it to the right, and we turn it to the left, it's going to flip the phase and it's basically going to affect the volume. very interesting there. The next one is going to be odd for even. So we have a saw wave, right? And if we turn this to the right, this is basically going to give us the odd harmonics, which is a square wave, even though it kind of looks a little Batman-y, kind of like that. And a good way to remember a square wave is it is all the odd harmonics, right? Odd squares are odd. If you're weird, you're kind of odd, right? You're a square, something like that. That's how I remember it. So maybe that might help you as well. And on the left-hand side, the opposite is true. So by default, we have all our harmonics here for our saw wave to the left. It'll remove those and then we double click back to default. We have our saw wave and then move to the right and it removes the evens. And we can always crossfade in between these and it's kind of nice to show like full, full power of these knobs so we can really exaggerate the sound and see what it's actually doing and then kind of just tailor it into our purpose, right? So we can have a saw wave and kind of make it a little bit square. So very cool sound there. And then next up we have brilliance. So this one's nice because let's say we have a saw wave and we want it a little bit brighter, right? On the upper harmonics. So we can always hit a note here and increase this to the right. So we're gonna have a brighter, more buzzier saw. And on the left, we're gonna have a darker, duller saw. And you can see on the waveform here how it's kind of rounded, a little softer. All right, a nice little soft saw. And if we turn to the right, we can sharpen those blades. It's gonna cut through the mix. <laughs> Look at that, saws cutting through the mix. Okay, so moving on from brilliance, we have filter. So the difference with this one really is since it's working on a spectrum basis, the slope is 100 dB per octave. So it's pretty crazy. So look how much this hacks off the uh, signal. It's like a straight cut. It's not even really a fade. It just hacks it off like that. So as you notice here, if we turn it to the right, we're going to be cutting our low end. And if we turn it to the left, we're going to be cutting our high end. So basically to the left is basically traditional low pass filter with a very, very steep curve. So pretty cool here. Next up from filter, we have band work. So if we turn this to the right here, we basically have this type of filter, right? We're just getting a little bit of slices and cuts and kind of things like that. So it's basically going to be a band pass, right? So we just have a little bit of area that we want to work with. And then to the left, the opposite is true, and it turns it into a notch. All right, so we're just cutting a little spots here through our spectrum. So moving on from bandworks, we have registrizer. So anytime you want to have an organ, you can always select this one and... Something like that, right? So basically this is boosting any of the octaves from the fundamental, which is basically kind of what an organ sounds like. Kind of a really cool one here. And you can always go like a little bit right. So we don't have all the harmonics faded, but pretty much all the way to the right is pretty intense.
It's a very cool uh, special effects right there for Registerizer. Next up, we have Scrambler. So this one is pretty much a very nasty sounding one. And I love how in the manual it says, if you need a dirty sounding digital oscillator, this is the one. So imagine if we have a little bit of unison on this bad boy right here. You can make some pretty crazy sounds with this one over here. So let's double click that. Let's go back to single here. And next up from Scramble, we have Turbulence. So some of these are very interesting, right? So the manual says periodically shuffles the harmonics at random. Even if, even if it has not been modulated, the speed is dependent on the oscillator's resolution, which is an important thing to think about, right? So if we turn this here. Right, so it's kind of, we're getting that weird, I guess turbulence is a great word for it, just kind of inaccuracies, it's changing, it's moving. But then over here on the oscillator number one, if we go to the res over here, we're gonna get a little bit more of that effect. So with some of these, keep in mind that the spectral effects here also kind of work in tandem with the resolution down over here on an oscillator number one, which we're gonna tackle this section in a later video, so yeah. So yeah, a lot of these spectral effects are very cool to really adjust our sound, our waveforms before we even get to filtering effects or modulation or stuff like that. So a lot of these don't overlook these because there's a lot of cool ones in here. So let's go into to the next one, which, which is going to be expander. So this expands or contracts when negative the spectrum, similar to brilliance if the harmonics are distributed evenly. <laughs> So go back to single here. So it would be like this. And it sounds really fat if we have a lot of voices. Okay, so moving on from expander, we have symmetry. So go back to single down over here. And this one's more so easy to tell on the oscilloscope here. So take a look by default here. We have our sine wave. And we can see it's kind of pushing it towards one side of the cycle. And keep in mind, these are all modulatable with this knob down up here and they run in series. So you can put this next one into the next spectral effect here. And we have all the same ones here. So there's a lot of possibilities. So from, from symmetry, we have phase expert. That's basically a variant of phase distortion. This would be a really nice one to slowly modulate, maybe with a really slow LFO, have a lot of voices, slow attack, kind of have a nice pad going on for one of the oscillators. So moving on from here, we have phase root. And this one, this one's weird. It's almost sci-fi, kind of spacey. And the manual says the original wave multiplies the phase response of the sine wave, which is... This right here, because we noticed we had a we had a saw wave in the beginning, but if we select phase root, we're going to get a sign if it's up and down here at noon, and then there we go. And the waveform just looks crazy. Next up here we have trajector. Yeah, a lot of these are a lot of fun to play with. So next up we have ripples. It's 
So we have a lot of, almost like a resonant kind of filter going on here. So next up from Ripples, we have Formandzilla. Or Formandzilla. And this one says, multiplies the spectrum of the waveform with a variable harmonic, resulting in formant-like spectra with several strong peaks and troughs. And we can see those here, right? We, it almost kind of looks like a U rise. We're cutting into the spectrum here. So next up, and like I said, there is a lot here. Sync Mojo is pretty cool. It's very similar to the hard sync that we talked about earlier, where we have sync over here. And it's kind of doing a very, very similar thing on the waveform. So take a look at this here. We have our saw wave, right? Let's double click this here. And it almost looks like it's moving back and forth, almost kind of like it's jittering. And the interesting spot with this one too as well, right? So by default, we have it like this. And we see those, basically those curve things that happen where it kind of cuts into the waveform. And then at that, at that split, it splits it again. So right there, it splits, and then it splits the second one again. A very, very interesting sound. So moving on from here, we have fractals. So kind of think of this one kind of like the Sync Mojo, but on steroids. And it's kind of interesting how we still have some of that original sound wave, but in between that we have all that chaos going, like all this stuff right here. And then we have our saw waves. Okay, so moving on from fractals, we have exophase. I kind of do really like this one as well. So this is a classic seven stage phaser and it's applied to the original wave. It's very sci-fi kind of sounding. So from Exophase, we have Scale. Okay, so this one's kind of complex as far as the math goes. It says the relative amplitudes of harmonics are scaled either to the power of two, negative softer, or three, positive brighter. Results in finer resolution of quiet harmonics, so the precise control over the overtone structure. In a lot of these two, I mean, the definitions are kind of important, kind of cool, but it really, at the end of the day, it really matters what they sound like and kind of how you set these things up. But it's good to kind of go through them, listen to them, see the waveform, see what they're doing. So if there's a certain sound that you're kind of going for, there might be a certain spectral effects that might suit you the best here. So next up, we have Scatter. Very interesting. Next up, we have Chop Lift. It's a very nasty saw that right there. Like right up in here. Wow. Okay, moving on from chop lift, we have hypercomb. So this one's actually really fun too. And it's a lot like unison. And this basically adds three copies of the original wave to the wave table. So next up, we have Phase Distortion. And this might be fun to modulate with an LFO or something like that. It's 
So yeah, lots of cool sound there. Let's go back to none and let's go to the next one, which is rap. <laughs> And this one says inverts part of the wave that extend above or below the th below a threshold. The limit for multiple wrapping are greater with negative values. Good lord. You can make some really screechy sounds with that one. So next up we have a DX here, same as Trajector, which is kind of that cool one that we talked about a little bit earlier, but 10 times stronger. And then last but not least, we have a smear, which blurs the spectrum in one direction. Negative is going to be downwards and positive is going to be upwards. All right, so that was all of these spectral effects. We made it through all of them here. So keep in mind, like I said earlier, that you have two of these, so you can run one into the other. So for example, if we had that turbulence one, that's kind of nice. We have a resolution all the way up. So we have something kind of like that. And then maybe we want something like a fractals. Put some unison. Yes, yeah, crazy the sounds that you can make just with these two different spectrum knobs here and all this list here. So kind of play around with them, maybe put some different ones in series, kind of see what you like, maybe modulate some of them with LFOs or envelopes or something like that. And you'll be surprised how cool you can make a patch before you even get into filtering your effects or anything like that. So yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and glad you stuck through with all the way to the end. If you did, uh, leave like a weird smiley emoji or something in the comments just so i know that you made it all the way to the end because this was a very long video so if you're still here thank you so much for watching and we're going to see you in the next video